Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve a system of two linear inequalities. Now, I chose some great um, examples for you because none of them are just in slope-intercept form. So what we're going to have to do is do a little bit of work to put them in slope-intercept form. Um, when I'm graphing inequalities, or especially a system of inequalities, if I have something in standard form, I like to rewrite it in slope-intercept form rather than trying to use uh, uh, the x-intercept form, finding the x and the y-intercepts. Now, Remember for inequalities, there's a couple important things we need to uh, remember. First of all, um, inequalities, remember the boundary line can either be shaded or dashed. And that's all going to depend on the line. If it's greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, it's going to be solid, meaning a part of the solution. And if it's greater than or less than, it's going to be dashed, meaning it's not a part of the system. And we can use test points um, to be able to verify each one of those. But I'll use test points for you know, at least one of them. Um, but then I'll also go into kind of our shortcuts. Remember, when we have an equation that's um, set equal to y, when we have y on the left-hand side and it's equal to you know, your x and your um, equal to your equation, remember, if, the line, if it's greater than, then it's going to be above. And if it's less than, then it's going to be below the line. So a lot of times, that's going to be shortcut. And I don't want to make this video way too long. So I will use some test points to kind of verify where you can always check your work. Um, for the problems, but then I'll kind of quickly get through the rest of them. So first thing we want to do, though, is rewrite them in slope-intercept form. And also remember with inequalities, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to switch the sign. So I'm going to remember, because there's two problems here that I want to make sure I don't forget to do that, because a lot of times, even when I'm teaching, it'll cross my, it'll, I'll forget about it as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite these in slope-intercept form. So I have a little area here to the right-hand side. And remember, I just want to get y by itself. So I'm just going to kind of work that out. And then remember, we write this in um, y is less than with our variable in front of our variable in front of. Actually, you know what? Let's write these in blue. Let's write the equation each in blue. We write the equation in front of our constant. Yeah. OK. So therefore, I now have y is less than x minus 3. And then I'll do the graphing in blue. Then we take our next equation, which is negative x plus y is greater than 4. To isolate the 4, you see my variable is also being subtracted by x, because that's a negative x. So to undo subtracted by x, I'm going to add an x to both sides. Therefore, I'm left with my final equation I'm going to graph, which is y is greater than x plus 4. OK, so basically now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and graph um, both of these equations separately. OK, so let's go down. Remember, when we're graphing, the constant represents your y-intercept. So this is going to go down to negative 3. So I'm going to go down negative 3, 1, 2, 3. And then my slope here. Remember, we can rewrite that as a fraction. So that's going to tell me to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. I can also go down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, and so forth. Um, and that is a dashed line, and that's a dashed line. So I'm just going to kind of follow this here. Okay. And then my next one is y is greater than x plus 4. So we'll get to the shading here in just a second. Um, for y is greater than x plus 4, now I'm going to go up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'm going to say follow the same slope. Up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. And you can see basically they are parallel lines, because remember, they have the same slope. OK, so in this example, I have y is less than y is, um, y is less than x minus 3. Now, the best thing, again, remember, is to choose a test point that's not on the line. So this test point is not on either of those lines, so I can test it. So I'll put in 0 in for y and 0 in for x. And when testing it, I have 0 is less than negative 3. Well, that is false for this line. So for this line, that's false. That means all the points above it are false. All the points above it are true. Or I'm sorry, below it are true. For the next one, again, you can choose the test point 0, 0. So I plug in 0 for y and 0 for x. And I have 0 is greater than 4. Again, this test point is now false for this line. So that means all the points below this line are false, and all the points above it are true. 
So you're going to shade all above. So therefore, we have basically, there's our system of equations. They don't intersect, and both of their true um, are going in opposite uh, directions. So we don't really have a feasible region where they're going to intersect. Um, what's also important about this is remember, noticing my inequality. Since I've solved for y here, y is less than, than my equation. Notice how I graph below it. y is greater than, and it's going above. And remember, that only works when your y is on the left-hand side and it's, equal, and it's isolated. All right, so now let's go and get to our next example. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to want to rewrite these in slope-intercept form. So I have x plus 3 is greater than or equal to negative 3. Oops, x plus y. So the first thing we're going to do is subtract an x on both sides. When doing that, I now obtain the equation uh, y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 3. And then I go to the next equation, which would be a 6x plus 4y is less than 14. First thing we want to do is subtract the 6x on both sides. When doing that, I now obtain 4y is less than negative 6x plus 14. I guess I should use a little bit more work over here. And then I'll divide by 4. Divide by 4. I have that. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. OK. Um, divide by 4, and I obtain the equation. y is now less than negative uh, 6. So that's going to be a negative 3 halves x. And that's going to be, let's see, that goes into there uh, 1, 2, 3 times, so 3 and a half. So plus 3, 3 and a half, or 4, or we could do 7 halves. Reduce that to a fraction. But just know 7 halves is like 3.5, so it's like halfway in between there. Now remember, we're not solving, we're not looking just for the one point where they intersect. We're looking for where their solution sets are going to intersect. So let's go ahead and graph y is greater than negative x minus 3. Again, go to your y-intercept, which is at negative 3. So I go down, 1, 2, 3. And now my slope is now a negative x, so we could rewrite that as a negative 1 over 1. So instead of going up 1 over 1, I'm now going to go down 1, down 1 to the right one, down 1 to the right one, or up 1 to the left, up 1 to the left, up 1 to the left. And then also you can see that I have a greater than or equal to symbol. So therefore, that's going to be a solid line. Okay. Since that's solved for y, we know that y is greater than, so that means going to be all the values that are above. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show arrows representing the solution for that um, graph. The next one here, now my y-intercept is 7 halves. How do you do that? Again, rewrite the fraction. Think of the fraction as a decimal, which would be 3.5. So I'm going to go up to 3.5. 1, 2, 3. 0.5 is going to be in between 3 and 4. And then I'm just going to follow my system. I'm just going to go down 3, so down to 2.5, down to 1.5, down to 0.5. So 1, 2, 3, and then over 2, 1, 2. And again, I'm sorry, that was negative, so it's down 3 to the right 2. And therefore, again, okay. Then for that one, you can see that this is, let's go and expand this a little bit further, okay, because they intersect pretty far down. Um, that one is less than. So therefore, that's going to be all the values that are less than this one. So that's going to be all the values going below the line. Oh, I guess, oops, oops. And then this one is a less than, so it's dashed, right? It's not less than or equal to, so it's dashed. OK, then that's all the values there. So when we're graphing a system of equations, the main important thing that we're concerned about is the intersection of the feasible solution. This one didn't have any intersection, right? It's basically a no solution. So here you can see they intersect in between these two lines. So I'm just either going to highlight them, or a lot of times we just kind of take you know, another marker and something, represent what exactly is the feasible solution. Where do the two inequality solutions intersect? That's our feasible region. Um, I guess maybe I thought about that should have been equal to whatever. OK. So now let's go and get to, the, get to this one. Um, so the first thing we want to do is solve for y. So I'm just going to use blue here. So I have 4x minus 4y is greater than or equal to negative 16. Um, so to go ahead and solve for y, in this case, we're going to subtract a 4. 
subtract a 4x, I'm sorry. And when doing that, I'm now left with a negative 4y is greater than or equal to a negative 4x minus 16. Again, be careful now. Now we're, um, we have to divide by negative 4, so I'm going to have to flip the sign. So when I divide by negative 4, I now obtain y is now greater than or equal to. Negative 4 divided by negative 4 is positive 1, so that's just going to be x, and that's going to be plus 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph that. Again, I go up to my y-intercept at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then my slope is up 1 over 1 or down 1 to the left 1. That's greater than or equal to, so it's going to be a dashed line. And since it's greater than, you could test the test point 0, 0, but all the points above the line are going to be true. Now let's get to the next problem. Uh, negative x plus 2y is greater than negative 4. Again, to solve for y, first thing we do is add x to both sides. Okay. By doing that, now I obtain 2y is greater than x minus 4. And then divide by 2. Divide by 2. And what you obtain now is y is now greater than. Did I not flip the sign again? God, I always do this. That's less than or equal to. You know what? I told you that. I knew I was going to tell you. I knew I was going to make that mistake. It's less than, so it's below. I forgot to flip the sign. I even say it, and I don't do it. Horrible math teacher. That's going to be all points below. OK, so now let's go ahead and graph this. I have y is going to be greater than 1 half x and negative 4 divided by 2 minus 2. OK, so the first thing is I go down to my y-intercept, which is at negative 2. And then my slope is up 1 over 2. Um, this is now a dashed line. God, come on. This is a solid line. This line is solid. What is wrong with me? Right? Anytime it's less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, it's solid. I don't know what I was doing. This is greater than, so it's going to be solid. And then now, or I'm sorry, that's greater than, so it's going to be dashed. Up 1 over 2. Okay, so they're intersecting over there, but that's okay. Remember, it's greater than, so it's going to be all the values that are above the line. And again, you can see that these values and these values, the intersection is again between those two lines. So I'm just going to use my red to kind of highlight um, the feasible region. All right, so let's get into this last one here. And hopefully, I'll just take it a little bit slower so I'm not making those simple mistakes that I keep on telling you about. Um, this example is 3x is 3x minus y. OK, so 3x minus y is greater than 12, and negative x plus 8y is greater than or equal to negative 4. All right, so again, we need to solve for y. So in the first example here, I have 3x minus y is greater than 12. First thing I need to do is subtract the 3x to get the y by itself. So therefore, I obtain negative y is greater than negative 3x plus 12, because that 12 is positive, so it's plus 12. Then I divide by negative 1 to isolate my y. Now, dividing by a negative number, so you've got to make sure you flip the sign. So in flipping the sign, I have now y is less than a positive 3x minus 12. All right, so let's go ahead and graph that. That is a dashed line because it's less than. So I go to my y-intercept, which is at negative 12. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hmm, let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I had to make my scale a little bit lower. And then we're going to go up 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. 1, 2, 3, over 1. And that's a dashed line. Okay, that's going to be less than, so that means all the values that are below that. Okay, and again, ladies and gentlemen, you can use test points like I did before any single time. Remember where it's true, that's the side that you shade. If it's false, you shade on the opposite side. All right, so let's go and get to the other equation here, which is negative x plus 8y is greater than or equal to a negative 4. Now I go ahead and solve for x. So to do that, I'm going to add the x on both sides. And oops, therefore, I have 8y is greater than or equal to x minus 4. Now to solve for y, ah, I'm going to go ahead and divide by 8. And therefore, I'm left with the equation of y is greater than or equal to 
1 8th x minus 1 half. Ooh, that doesn't look like fun. Let's write that over here. y is greater than or equal to, right? So that's going to be a solid line. When you have x divided by 8, x over 8, that's the same thing as 1 8th times x. So I'm going to write that as 1 8th times x so I understand what the slope is. And then that's neg um, minus 4 divided by 8, which would be a negative 1 half. So first thing I'm going to do is going to go to my y-intercept, which is negative 1 half. So it's going to be between 0 and negative 1. And then I'm basically just going to go up 1 over 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So a very, very slow line. Um, that is going to be solid because it's greater than or equal to. Okay, and since it's greater than, that's going to be all the values that are above it. And then you can see that the feasible region is going to be contained at where the two um, inequalities intersect. So therefore, I'm just going to take green here just to highlight that region. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It looks like a crazy thing going on here when I put all the problems together. But that is how you solve a systems of equation, uh, systems of inequalities, linear to a linear inequalities, by graphing. Thanks.